CBI wanted to arrest Narendra Modi, Amit Shah in Ishrat Chahan case, Extig Vansora. The CBI had given a clean shit in 2014 to Amit Shah on grounds of insufficient evidence. CBI wanted to arrest Narendra Modi, Amit Shah in Ishrat Chahan case. Ex Dig Vansara The CBI had given a clean shit in 2014 to Amit Shah grounds of insufficient evidence. Gujarat's former Deputy Inspector General of Police DG Vansara on Tuesday told a special court that the CBI wanted to arrest then Chief Minister Narendra Modi and then Minister of State for Home Amit Shah in the Ishran Jahan fake shootout case. Arguing for Vanzaura in a discharge petition filed in the CBI court presided over by J.K. Pandya, his counsel V.D. Gajdra claimed that though the Central Bureau of Investigation intended to arrest Modi and Shah, fortunately it did not happen. While Modi is now the Prime Minister of India, Shah is the president of Bharatiya Janata Party. Vansa Ura, who is out on bail in the case, had earlier submitted in the same court that Modi was secretly questioned by the case investigating officer when he was the chief minister. The CBI had given a clean shot in 2014 to Shah on grounds of insufficient evidence. In June 2004, Mumbai-based 19-year-old Ishrat Chahan, her friend Javed Elias Pranesh, and Pakistani nationals Zeeshan Johar and Amzad Ali Rana were gunned down by a team of Ansar's men in a gun battle on the outskirts of Ahmedabad. Ishra Jahan and her friends were dubbed terrorists out on a mission to assassinate the then Chief Minister Narendra Modi. However, subsequent CBI investigation concluded that the shootout was fake. Ansar's lawyer on Tuesday claimed that the charge sheet against his client in the case was concocted and that there was no prosecutable evidence against the former police officer. He also said that the testimony of witnesses could not be believed as some were earlier among the accused in the case. The CBI opposed the discharge plea of Vanza Ura. Another co-accused and senior police official in Kamin 2 has filed a discharge plea in the same court and hearing on it concluded last month. In his final submission in the court, Amin, a retired SP and now a practicing lawyer, claimed that Satish Verma, the Gujarat Kandri IPS official who assisted the CBI in the investigations, had tampered with the evidence and maintained that he had never fired from his gun. Both former police officers had also sought parity with former in-charge DGPPP Pandey a co-accused who was discharged by the court. The court posted the matter for next hearing on June 15. Ben Rhodes was Obama's deputy national security advisor for strategic communications. Barack Obama Barack Obama played African-American card to win PM Modi on Paris climate change. Claims book Ben Rhodes was Obama's deputy national security advisor for strategic communications. Washington, the then U.S. President Barack Obama used his African-American card to win over Prime Minister Narendra Modi during the last phase of negotiations at the Paris summit in late 2015, where India was the last holdout as its officials were the toughest negotiators, says a book on his presidency. When we got to Paris, the main holdout was India, Obama's then top foreign policy and national security aide for eight years Ben Rhodes writes in his book The World At Is, a memoir of the Obama White House. The book will hit stands today.
Rhodes was Obama's deputy national security adviser for strategic communications. Giving a blow-by-blow -blow account of the last phase of U.S.-India talks on climate change, Rhodes writes that at one point of time in Paris Obama himself entered into a personal conversation with two Indian officials to convince them of the need for India to be part of the deal. But he failed to cut ice with the two Indian negotiators, says the book. Then he spent nearly an hour with Modi in Paris. Nothing appeared to work till the time Obama played the African-American card, according to the book. For nearly an hour, Modi kept underscoring the fact that he had 300 million people with no electricity, and coal was the cheapest way to grow the Indian economy, he cared about the environment, but he had to worry about a lot of people mired in poverty, the book claimed. Obama went through arguments about a solar initiative we were building, the market shifts that would lower the price of clean energy, writes Rhodes in his book. But he still hadn't addressed a lingering sense of unfairness, the fact that nations like the United States had developed with coal, and were now demanding that India avoid doing the same thing. Look, Obama finally said, I get that it's unfair. Modi smiled knowingly and looked down at his hands. He looked genuinely pained, he writes. I know what it's like to be in a system that's unfair, he went on. I know what it's like to start behind and to be asked to do more, to act like the injustice didn't happen. But I can't let that shape my choices, and neither should you. It never heard him talk to another leader in quite that way. Modi seemed to appreciate it. He looked up and nodded, writes the former top White House official, while describing how Obama used his African American card to convince Modi. But before it, Rhodes writes. Obama tried and could not succeed in convincing the Indian negotiators. We were scheduled to meet with India's Prime Minister, Narendra Modi. Obama and a group of us waited outside the meeting room, when the Indian delegation showed up in advance of Modi. By all accounts, the Indian negotiators had been the most difficult, he writes. Obama asked to talk to them, and for the next 20 minutes, he stood in a hallway having an animated argument with two Indian men. I stood off to the side, glancing at my Blackberry, while he went on about solar power, says Rhodes. This was something unprecedented and not part of the protocol, he adds. One guy from our climate team came over to me. I can't believe who's doing this. He whispered. These guys are impossible. Are you kidding? I said. It's an argument about science. Modi came around the corner with a look of concern on his face, wondering what his negotiators were arguing with Obama about, writes Rhodes. We moved into the meeting room, and a dynamic became clear. Modi's team, which represented the institutional perspective of the Indian government, did not want to do what is necessary to reach an agreement, he says. Modi, who had ambitions to be a transformative leader of India, and a person of global stature, was torn. This is one reason why we had done the deal with China, if India was alone. It was going to be hard for Modi to stay out, Rhodes writes in the book. Congress, along with, other opposition parties have been slowly gaining footage over the BJP with each passing poll and by-elections make soldiers buy own uniform, shoes in India, Rahul Gandhi takes on Modi government again Congress, along with. Other opposition parties have been slowly gaining footage over the BJP with each passing poll and by-elections New Delhi, 
Congress Rahul Gandhi on Tuesday mocked the ruling Bharatiya Janata Party BJP, after reports of the center slashing funds for soldiers' uniform emerged. Make, empty slogans and useless acronyms, in India. Meanwhile, make our soldiers buy their own clothes and shoes, tweeted the Gandhi scion while sharing a report by the Economic Times. Make, empty slogans and useless acronyms, in India. Meanwhile, make our soldiers buy their own clothes and shoes. The report indicated that the Indian Army drastically cut down its supplies from government ordained factories. The cut was necessitated after the center failed to allocate funds in order to purchase critical ammunition for a short intense war. The slashing of funds affected critical ammunition and spares for a short intense war. Due to this, soldiers will now be forced to spend their own money to buy uniforms and other essentials from local markets. Both the center and the Indian Army are yet to confirm this fact. Prime Minister Narendra Modi led by the JAP government had given a massive push to make an India movement immediately after coming into power in 2014, launching several initiatives around it. Congress, along with, other opposition parties have been slowly gaining footage with each passing poll and by-elections. In recent Lok Sabha battles, the Narendra Modi and Amit Shah powered BJP retained just one seat out of four seats. Meanwhile, in assembly by polls, a united opposition managed to dent BJP's hold with the party winning just one seat out of ten. Earlier in May, despite being voted as the single largest party in Karnataka, BJP failed to form the government with the Congress JDS alliance won a crucial trust vote.